This is Florida wide receiver Ricky Pearsall. He's an elite athlete. He's not an elite athlete for a white dude. He's not an elite athlete for a slot receiver. He's an elite athlete for NFL terms. 4'4", 140, 97th percentile vertical jump, 96th percentile three cone, 90th percentile short shuttle. He's 23 years old, but he was really productive. He's got a little inside outside versatility. And ultimately, I thought that he's one of the better route runners in the entire draft. I think people will be shocked to know that he's six foot one, 189 pounds. Like he just looks smaller to me a bit on mm -hmm. NFL field. And I actually think that goes back to his, his 20th percentile arm length, 17th percentile wingspan. Um, but Hayden, I think the big question is, is he just a slot receiver or can he be more than that? And I'll throw out some numbers that kind of back one of those statements up 61 of 93 targets this past season were out of the slot. 98 of 156 over the last two seasons. And that's including playing with Anthony Richardson. However, it's not your typical slot player because we're talking about a dude who had an A dot, an average depth of target of 11 yards this past season. Mm -hmm. And then when you play with Anthony Richardson, he had a 17.3 average depth of target. I mean, 55 of his 63 targets mm -hmm. were 10 plus yards on the field. So it was almost an intermediate and deep slot wide receiver versus yeah. the normal short jitterbug nest that we get at the position. We've seen this with Christian Kirk, the vertical slot option yeah. can win on the outside on occasion. I think that's kind of where I'm at with Ricky Pearsall. There are some times where I think that this catch radius and the 189 pounds, it's not that much. I think there was some times where you kind of get pushed out of the way on some downfield routes, but I thought his ball tracking was exceptional. His hands are very good. He made some, I mean, maybe the, the best catch you'll ever see, period. His catch rate on 10 plus yard targets was actually the best in this draft class. Again, we're seeing guys who are 6'3", 6'5", 6'1". He obviously mm -hmm. is the best in this class in that area. And like you said, his adjustments, either back shoulder or throwing it off, one hand stabs, there were a lot of errant throws, and I love Anthony Richardson, but some errant throws over the last two years, and he did his best yeah. to work through them. That is for sure. And again, because of those numbers, like I don't want people to get upset if someone else does call him a slot wide receiver and they believe he can be an outside wide receiver, which he might be able to do. I think the Christian Kirk, when I hadn't thought of that, mm -hmm. to me, that makes so much sense, mm -hmm. right? Again, as someone who almost was a do everything type player at Texas A&M, but found his best bet as, again, this intermediate downfield slot type wide receiver. He's not going to break a whole bunch of tackles, did not do that that often the last two years. But man, he is such a fun player to watch. I mean, yes. 26 and 24, 15 plus yard gains over the last few years. But what twists your brain is sometimes when he is body catching, he does that same like hopping midsection catch that like a Wes Welker or a yeah. Julian Edelman did. Yeah. So it's so easy to compare him to those guys. Yeah. Let's not forget Julian Edelman played with Danny Amendola. Julian Edelman was an outside guy that also mm -hmm. played in the slot. If that's the career path that Ricky mm -hmm. Pearsall takes, holy hell, we're in for a great player. I saw Edelman pop up when I was doing my like statistical comps based off the combine because Edelman's agility drills were fantastic. Same thing with Ricky Pearsall. I think Edelman is a little bit more physical like after the catch than what Ricky Pearsall has shown. One of the comps that I came up with was Jerry Judy. Now, Jerry Judy well, has been on the outside and has not been that successful. When Jerry Judy's in the slot, I think he's actually a decent player that's got paid a ton of money. I think there were some times where Ricky Pearsall would kind of oversell some of his routes, but when he's actually in control, the route running is really, really nice. So I think that Ricky Pearsall, I saw him on these option routes from the slot in breaking and out breaking routes from the slot. We have some, some space to maneuver on each side. I think that's when you see his agility and then this burst on the first step really pop off. And we're talking about all this downfield production where he's pretty efficient there last year on his targets between zero and 10 yards downfield. He got 16 of 17. He had an 80% uh, success rate when he was thrown targets, catchable targets from yeah. the slot. So he can win in the underneath part of this game as well. Yeah, the, the downfield stuff last year was interesting because it felt like a whole bunch of it was double moves or slot fades or fake screens where he basically was almost manufactured. Mm -hmm. But then again, going back to his 2022 work, everything because that offense was pushed almost five yards further down the field and he was still super comfortable in that area. Like the diagonal crossers from one side of the field to the other are so deadly with him. And again, how he makes these unreal adjustments. He can lose again because of his arm length and, you know, corners can work through him. But man, he gives it a, a, a great try in terms of the body control that he adds on top of it. How dare you put that 
Jerry, Judy, Juju on him because I, I thought that his, again, just fluidity and, and body control on top of it was, it's always what scared me about like an animated route runner of mm -hmm. Jerry, Judy. I thought that Pierce all played like much more composed with, yeah. with everything. I mean, some of the names that popped up to me, the Giants version of Steve Smith, Colts, Anthony Gonzalez, who was a first round pick back in the day with Peyton Manning. I think the athletic profile that he brings to the table, like if can, if you just watch him, you might think this is an average athlete. We see one of these guys every single year. Man, the athletic profile on top yeah. of it kind of differs him from a whole bunch of the other types that we've seen in this second, third round territory, like the Wandell Robinsons yes. or the Josh Downs. And I love Josh Downs as a prospect. Mm -hmm. This might be like an extra gear on yes. top of that. Totally different gear. Now for some potential limitations, I think statistically, these are fifth year players, 23 years old. This is kind of a an iffy kind of landing spot. And then also this last season, only 58th percentile in his uh, pass game production, like the team share of Florida's receiving yards, only 58th percentile. His age adjusted production in general is 41st percentile. So there was something up where he wasn't completely dominating throughout his entire career. But whenever I watched him on the tape, you can just see the athletic traits kind of pop off. So uh, I, I kind of liked him more in the slot role. I think he will be able to win on the outside. But I think that the motion routes and some screen stuff to him, option routes on occasion, I think that you're going to get all that type of uh, stuff and you're going to see the, like the athleticism after the catch and those type of circumstances, not as much so like breaking tackles, working over the middle. Like if, and I know this is a an outlier draft class when it comes to wide receivers because there's so much talent here. By the way, go and watch all of our other videos. We have prospect profiles on basically every single one of them. But like if Wandale Robinson is the 43rd pick or John Mechie's the 44th pick, Right. Or we even go to like Sky Moore as the 54th overall selection. And that's just in 2022. You can go down to like D. Eskridge, Rondell Moore, like he JSN win the first round. He is a tier above all the guys that I mentioned. So, like, again, any other year, I think like maybe the first wide receiver off the board at the start of yeah. round two is in his possible future. Heck, it still might be. I could see a team falling in love yeah. with Ricky Pearsall because. Again, I loved Anthony Richardson as a prospect and just seeing the connection those two guys had was something special. And I could, again, see and envision uh, NFL front office being like, hey, this is exactly what our quarterback, our young quarterback needs mm -hmm. at the NFL level. Right now, he's my wide receiver eight. I have a uh, round two grade on him. I'm thinking about doing an early round two grade on him because just the athletic traits, like you said, compared to the other slot wide receivers, you typically just don't get this agility and speed. And then 97th percentile of vertical as well. So a uh, big fan of his game. I think slot is his des destination spot. And I think that's totally fine. All right. That does it. Before you go, hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. We'll check you out on the next one.